The month of March is at its last thread, and it's been a successful month, especially for the mobile gaming community. We've seen a lot of long-awaited, hype-filled titles hit the scene, as well as a few surprising yet silent releases. Hey! Game Heads, it's your host PDoc, and today we'll walk through the 10 best newly released games of March 2024. Let's get into the video, shall we? Let's start softly with Eggy Party, a metaverse game, and if you don't know what that means, it's kind of an MMORPG meet sandbox, where players gather in elaborate servers filled with several mini-games and activities that you can participate in with your friends or experience solo. The graphics are cute and colorful, with egg-shaped characters that come in a surplus variety of different designs and cosmetics. You can create a personal universe to host parties and custom-built games or simply hang out with friends, there is an emphasis on creativity and uniqueness that looks appealing in a sense. As I said there are several types of somewhat mini-games scattered around the Eggieverse from FPS shooters, to Bomberman-style action and everything in between. I find the project ambitious and with a well-received rating on the App Store, I think it might have succeeded. The might being there because I haven't played the game. Eggy Party is available on both mobile platforms, playable only online. Ripping off the bandage with a likely ripoff that might just take off. I'm talking about none other than Blood Strike. What started as a Warzone light is now arguably its best contender, having the balls to release on the same day as the Battle Royal Giant. Blood Strike, although bearing mirrored characteristics from Warzone is also a good Battle Royal. You dive into a slowly closing map, fighting other teams to be the last team standing. With different operators bearing different abilities, a mechanic that lets you revive teammates anywhere and anytime as far as you have enough cash, and other promised upcoming additional events and stuff. I say it's making a solid name for itself. And since it's super optimized and without a huge paywall, I say it's as good as NetEase can get. Why didn't anyone talk about this? Katana Zero Netflix, an amazing-looking katana-wielding action title with a fair amount of blood and gore. The platforming hack and slash action is gorgeous, the best I've seen in months all enveloped around what seems to be an interesting blurred-out story. You play as a modern-day samurai, who seems to be running from the police and the mafia, at least that's what I got from the trailer. Its combat is a mixture of slow-timed plus insta-death, combo game, with flashy animation really selling the whole aesthetics. I find it worth playing. The reviews for it on Steam are delightful and promising and it's from Netflix and they have been cooking lately. The game isn't fully out yet, but its soft launch is in the Philippines, shout out to my boys there, I see you, and this is for you. Next up is a title that has apparently been in the Android sphere for over a year, and I am only just aware of its existence because of its recent release on iOS. The name of the game is Immortal Mayor, a town building simulator where you take on the role of a local deity. You can lend powers from other gods to answer prayers by helping your worshippers in their daily tasks, performing miracles, matchmaking, good harvest, etc. helping them grow and expand your little town. I think the game has a smooth slash relaxing fashion to it, with an interesting premise that gives you the literal powers of a god that increase with the offerings that you get from your worshippers, trading them for needed abilities. It's quite interesting, if I may say, and as a town building simulator, you know that it has already gotten my utmost attention. Town Immortal Mayor is available on both Android and iOS, is free, and it's offline. Next up is Cookie Run which is Castle, and I have to come out and say it, they did not need to go that hard on a literal blockbusting game trailer, it just looks amazing with even stop motion. Anyways, the game follows the story of a living cookie, Ginger Brave, on a mission to escape the witch's castle, full of all types of oddities, secrets, and spooky enemies. The gameplay involves the iconic tap-to-blast mechanics where you match blocks to break them gaining enough points to clear levels. As you win, you uncover the adventure-like storyline that is full of new eccentric and colorful cookie friends. I find the premise fascinating, at least enough to download and play but the ratings and comments on the app store suggest that it may be tilting towards a pay-to-win route, what do you think? I personally think you should at least try it because of the framework. The game is available on both Android and iOS, is free, and I think it's playable online. Remember when I said that this list had an unexpected, surprising entry? That entry is none other than Hades Mobile. Yes, you've heard correctly, that's why I am elated, hyped, and overjoyed about the launching of the fascinating game to your handhelds, and is all thanks to Netflix. For those who do not know about this masterpiece, Hades is a hack and slash action roguelike where you assume the role of the son of the Greek god of death, Hades, trying to escape his father's domain, the treacherous underworld, to meet his mother, Persephone, 
The game has gorgeous graphics and beautiful combat, filled with a saturated list of weapons and abilities. The roguelike nature is without a doubt, well done, with each run and subsequent death expanding on a developing story. The combat is well done, with challenging enemies of different types finalized in a daunting boss fight. The game has been praised in the console community with a very high rating on Steam and I am thrilled to pieces, waiting for it to get its Android release because Hades Mobile is available only on iOS at the moment. Let's address the elephant in the room, that being the first-person shooter, Battle Royal Giant, Call of Duty, Warzone Mobile, although a bad launch in my own opinion. Warzone is now available globally, burning Android phones of all types. It truly brings the incredible console game to mobile in all its glory, even if it isn't necessarily optimized enough. As a battle royal, you dive into an ever-shrinking map, to battle other players and come out on top. The interesting mechanic in this, however, is the Gulag, a chance to fight in other to get redeployed when initially downed. There are also multiple game modes, like multiplayer, mobile battle royal, and more. The shooting mechanics, physics-based movement effects, and graphics are amazing, but only if your device is one of the big guys. It's a great game, and I won't lie, even in its high ping, and pixel graphic state that I experience, I still have a great time playing multiplayer. It's available for both Android and iOS and it's free. Nightcrow is next, a new MMORPG that, at first glance, you realize that it looks terrifyingly stunning. Made with the Unreal Engine 5, I'm even a bit scared to say that this is a mobile game. The game is set in a fantasy medieval world full of magic, fairy tales, and sorcery, where you can play as a knight, wizard, and all the other iconic classes in the MMORPG. I am not a big fan of that genre, I don't ever think I've actually spent my time playing MMOs, but the thing that drew my interest fascinating Unreal graphics looking straight out of a console. Sadly it is an auto-battler, a sub-mechanics that doesn't really settle well with the community of its players. The game is free and available on both mobile platforms. The hype is real with the next game on the list, arguably the most popular Manoa ever created, Solo Leveling is having a good 2024. First, an anime release, now an action hack and slash RPG that follows the story made by Netmarble, you know the name guys that are making an open world style 7 Deadly Sins game. I am not gonna lie, I first thought the game was gonna be like most anime games, being a turn-based strategy game, which, I don't really like, but the game takes a different style with the third-person open world aesthetic mixed with amazing looking hack and slash combat adorned with tons of skills and characters recognizable from the series. You play as Jean Wu, the weakest hunter, who after a mysterious event reawakens and is on a quest to become the strongest. Dive into Gates, other dimensions where you battle all types of enemies, defeat bosses, and experience the story from a gamer's perspective. I for one think it is worth checking out, especially if you are a fan of the solo leveling franchise. It's not yet available globally with early access available on Tap Tap at the moment. Kingdom the Blood is next, and it is a weird one. A Souls-like hack and slash game set in ancient China, where you play as a swordsman trying to curb a zombie outbreak. The reason why I say it is a weird one is that even though the graphics are one of the best I've seen on the mobile platform for a while now, it isn't necessarily talked much about. I have seen the reviews, and the reviews say it is quite a good game. Demanding, but good. The combat is gripping, with heavy strikes, blocks and dodges, and satisfying combos. It was a game made for both the PC and the mobile platform and has quite the amount of detail put into its combat mechanics. At least, that's what it looks like from the gameplays I've seen. Kingdom the Blood looks amazing, I won't lie about that. The story is fascinating, but according to the reviews online, the controls need serious work. It is available on both Android and iOS, and it is free and playable online. With that, we are done with today's video. Which new mobile game are you going to try out? Let me know in the comments section. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video to get more content. It is your host, PDoc, once again. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.